Welcome back to another Painted by Fame. Let's jump right into it. I'm using Paint Pot and Painterly by MAC. Blend it all over the lid. Use a clean fluffy brush to take the excess product off. And then follow through using a soft brown pencil to create a larger crease. To set, I'm going to use a mid-sized shading brush and several neutral shades to define this line. What I found works for me when working on the crease is using a clean brush in between each shade to diffuse and create a seamless blend. Using this tiny Cosette shading brush, I can get the most definition to exaggerate this line. To define the lid, I'm going to use Paint Pot and Painterly and a flat brush to go just against that socket line. And then I'm gonna layer it with an iridescent shadow and follow with a glitter of my choice. So you can customize this look for your specification and tone. My focus for this look was to help you find the most natural approach to bringing out the best in your face. I'm so excited to be using this product. I had to go to Sephora to pick it up where it was sold out but it's the Marc Jacobs Highline Gel Crayon in Black Horror. It's an amazing long wear ultra black pencil and I'm just gonna go in with a flat angle brush and just define and smudge into those lashes. It's absolutely wonderful. On a cosmetic sponge, I'm applying Alcone Stop the Sweat. This will help extend the life of my makeup. Here's a tip for those that have a very strong five o'clock shadow or a beard that shows through even after shaving. I'm using Anastasia Cream Contour in Pure Orange and I'm applying that to the beard line of my face, setting with a translucent powder and then following through my foundation application. This tip will help neutralize any cool tones that naturally come through foundation when you have a strong beard. Using the Beauty Blender sponge, I'm starting at my forehead with the least amount of product and working my way down to the jaw where I'm concentrating most of my foundation application. And as you'll see me do when I apply the highlight and the contour of cream foundations, I will blend in between every step using the sponge. Now, using my ring finger under both eyes, I'm applying Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer. I'm gonna also apply that to the high points of my face, which include my forehead, the bridge of my nose, the top of my lip and chin. With my Cosette paintbrush, I'm going to begin applying my contour, which is a friend of everybody's face. Now the benefits of contour is it's playing with the identity of light on your face and how it lays. So what I'd like to do is follow the natural bone structure of where the depth of my face will reside and yours will as well. And feel with your fingers where the hollows of your cheekbones are and follow that jawline and slimming the nose. It's just about looking what you'd like to see. Now a tip for good nose contour. I like to use a slender brush. Here I'm using a Cosette paint brush. And with not an excessive amount of product, go along the high bridge of the nose. If you go too deep, then you're accentuating width in the nose. And if you put too much product, 
it ends up dragging out and clouding the highlight. So a little bit of product, narrow brush, and high on the nose bridge. Blending brings out the best in what we've just done here with our highlight and our contour. So what I like to do is start in the depth of tone and go in tapping yet circular motions to diffuse the lines that I've painted into the face. To secure the foundation, I like to use a powder puff with a decent amount of product but not an excessive amount of product. Just the right amount. Now I am a bit on the oily side, so with the cream foundation, it can usually exaggerate my oiliness. What I'm gonna do is put most of this product concentrated on the center of my face, the T-zone, my nose, my chin, smile lines, and jawline, and then lightly dust my contours with a bit of banana powder on a fluffy brush. Then to seal the deal, I'll take that same powder puff with no product on it, just the one I'd used, and press the entire face as one total unit. With a powder brush, continue to sculpt the face using a deep tone pressed powder. With the same product and a eyeshadow brush, continue to define the nose. For dimension, I'm adding a wash of pink blush to my cheeks. Now to add light to my face, I'll be using a Laura Mercier highlight powder with a fluffy brush onto the high points of my face. Now I must admit I'm a bit of a product junkie. I think the first step is admitting that you have a problem. And I can't help it, I love makeup. Um, here I go, I'm using two shades of Anastasia brow pencils to give a soft ombre effect in the natural hair, which you've never seen me do is utilize the natural hair on my face. It's usually shaven off completely. Um, and I'm going to go in and give a little bit of detail, definition, and extension in the tail of my brow. I'll set with two tones of powder using the Anastasia flat angle brush. Then I'm going to use a brow gel to define the hairs at the front and to the end. This is a recommendation for those who like a very dramatic and fluffy, hairy brow. Using a Anastasia brow pen, I'm going in and actually painting individual hairs in the front all the way to define the tail. It looks incredible and extraordinarily hairy. Sharpen brow using a light cream concealer and a small paintbrush. Now prep those lashes with a good curl and coat them with a heavy dose of mascara of your choice, top and bottom. For a quick and clean precision lip, I'll be using two products, a pencil by OCC followed through with a lip tar, also by OCC, and a paintbrush. It gets to the point and it finishes the entire look. And no fame face would be complete without her beauty mark. Thank you for the love. Comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, kisses from fame.